This is the solution to quiz six. Okay, so question one, we're given a nonlinear inequality. And it says solve by constructing a sign chart. Okay, so the first step in constructing a sign chart is to consider the natural domain. Uh, the natural domain is all x. Uh, because you could plug in any x at all that you wanted into here. That doesn't mean that uh, you could plug in any x at all and it would be true. It just means that you could plug in any x and that wouldn't cause uh, a division by zero or the square root of a negative number or something like that. Okay, So the natural domain is all x. So now we're going to take this inequality and we're going to do, to do the zero and simplify step. So the zero part of this step is to make to make one side zero. One side of the inequality zero. Okay, so then I'll make the left side zero so that I can move the x squared to the other side. Uh, doing that, that would be 0 less than um, x squared minus x. So positive x squared minus x. And then I'll subtract 4 from both, both sides and get minus 6. OK, now that's zeroing one side. And now we're going to simplify. by factoring. And that will be uh, 0 less than, OK, so then does this factor? Yes, it does. Into x plus 2 multiplied by x minus 3. OK. <coughs> so, the next step in the sign chart method is to solve the equation, the corresponding equation. So that means we want to solve 0 equal to x plus 2 multiplied by x minus 3. Well, the solutions to that are negative 2 or positive 3. And then now we make the chart. So uh, we did not find any breaks in the domain. So there's no breaks in the domain to plot. But we did find two solutions. So those solutions get plotted. And I'm going to plot them as solid because they're in the domain. And when, when there are breaks in the domain, we plot these as open. So now to select a point in each region, so negative 3 is in here, uh, 2 is in here, and 4 is in here. And now we're going to take those test points, and we're going to plug them into the non-zero side of the zeroed and simplified uh, inequality and check for sign. So evaluating at negative 3, uh, that term is negative, or that factor is negative, so negative. And then negative 3 minus 3 is also negative. Evaluating at positive 2, this factor would be positive, and the other one negative. And then evaluating at positive 4, that one would be positive, and the other positive. So that the overall SIGN is positive, and then negative, and then positive. OK. Then, now we can make a conclusion. The conclusion is that we want the 
positive regions. So the reason why we want the positive regions is because of this. So the fact that this says we want our even, even better might be to say this. We wanted to know when this, um, when this product was greater than zero. So we want the positive regions. So there were two positive regions. So we'll get both of those. And we do not get the endpoints because that says strictly greater than. Is strictly greater than. So then it will be negative infinity to negative 2, not including negative 2, union 3 to infinity. So that's the answer to question 1. Question 2. Okay, another sign chart question. Okay, so then same first step, natural domain. Uh, okay, so then we need to solve 2x minus 7 equal to 0 because that's what we can't let happen. So that would be uh, 2x is 7 or x is 3.5. Okay, so then the natural domain is x not equal to 3.5. That's the only x that we can't have. That means that this inequality can be evaluated at any position, at any x, except x is 3.5. That doesn't mean that it will be true at any x. That's what the solution is. But it will be evaluable at any x except 3.5. So part two is that we'll zero and simplify. So the zero step, I'll move the one to the left. So that'd be x plus five over two x minus seven, and then minus one is greater or equal to uh, zero. And so now we want to get a common denominator. So this would be x plus 5 over 2x minus 7 minus 2x minus 7 over 2x minus 7 greater or equal to 0. So now this term is the same, so that nothing happened there. And then this is 1, and I change the 1 to be 2x minus 7 over 2x minus 7. Okay, because that gives me a common denominator. So now I can perform the subtraction. So x plus 5 minus 2x minus 7 over 2x minus 7 greater or equal to 0. <coughs> Okay, so then simplifying this, that would be negative x, and then uh, 5 minus negative 7 is 5 plus 7, which is 12. And then divide by 2x minus 7, greater or equal to 0. Okay, so now it's been zeroed and simplified. The next step is to solve... The equation. So negative x plus 12 and then divide by 2x minus 7 equal to 0. So now we're asking, we're asking when a fraction is equal to 0. So the only way that that can occur is if the numerator is 0. So that is to say if I move the x to the other side we have 12 is x. Okay, so now we'll make the chart. Okay, 
And the method up to now was to figure out these positions. So here, this is a break in the domain. So it must be plotted. And this is a solution to the equation. So it must be plotted. Generally speaking, on an exercise, you could have any number of breaks and any number of uh, solutions. So we need to plot both of these, and we need to be careful to plot them in the correct left to right order. So this one is further left, so 3.5 and 12. Okay, now 3.5 is not part of the domain, so I'll plot it open. And 12 is part of the domain, so I'll plot it closed. Okay, so then uh, choose a point in each region. So how about um, 3 here, 4 here, and 13 here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take these green test points and we're going to plug them in to the non-zero side of the zeroed and simplified inequality. We're going to plug it into numerator and denominator. So if you plug in 3, that'd be negative 3 plus 12 in the numerator, so that'd be positive. And then in the denominator, uh, that would be 6 minus 7, so that'd be negative. Okay, then 4, that'd be negative 4 plus 12, so uh, that'd be uh, positive. And then negative 4, uh, sorry, 2 times 4 is 8, minus 7 is 1, so that would be positive. And then negative 13 plus 12 in the numerator, that would be negative. And then 2 times 13 is 26, minus 7 is 19, and that is positive. So the overall SIGNs are negative, and then positive, and then negative. So now we're able to make a conclusion. So the sign chart method takes the reals and it cuts it into pieces. So in this exercise, we've cut it into three pieces. We labeled each piece as being negative or positive. And the answer to the question is either going to be all of the negative regions or all of the positive regions. And in this exercise, we want the positive regions. The reason why we want the positive regions is because of uh, this. So we want the positive regions because we were analyzing this expression and we want to know when this expression is greater or equal to zero. <coughs> so right here in the middle. So that would be 3.5 to 12. So we cannot include 3.5 because it's not in the domain, and we must include 12 because it says greater or equal. So that's the answer to part two, question two. So question three is given this polynomial function, uh, find the difference quotient. Okay, so f of x plus h, that's 2 and then x plus h squared plus 3 x plus h plus 1. So that would be 2 x squared plus 2xh plus h squared and then plus 3x plus 3h plus 1. And then I'll make a little comment here that these terms of all of this the most likely spot where a student makes a mistake is right here 
may forget these. So when you square a binomial, that's just like doing FOIL. It's x plus h multiplied by another x plus h. And this, is, this term is f. These are o and i. And this is l. Okay, so these terms are frequently left off by students. Okay, so multiplying this out, that would be 2 x squared plus 2xh, oh uh, no, sorry, 4xh, uh, plus 2h squared plus 3x plus 3h plus 1. So that gives us this bit. <clears throat> so what we're, we're requested, f of x plus h minus f of x, all of this over h, that will be 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared plus 3x plus 3h plus 1 and then minus 2x squared plus 3x plus 1, and then all of this over h. So now, what's currently written is not correct uh, for the following reason. This says, this says take f of x plus h and subtract from it f of x. So from all of these terms, subtract all of those terms. So I substituted in this expression. This expression is going to get substituted into here. And this expression gets substituted into here. So when the substitution occurs, you need to parenthesize in order to make sure your substitution is correct. So these red parentheses that I'm adding, they don't actually change the result. Before the red parentheses were there, it was exactly the same. It, it meant exactly the same thing. And now I'm going to add these green parentheses. And this does change the meaning. Because now it's saying that we're going to subtract 2x squared, and we're going to subtract 3x, and we're going to subtract 1. Whereas before it said we were just going to subtract this one and then add these two. OK. So now, canceling like terms, this 2x squared cancels with that 2x squared. Nothing will cancel that 4xh. So 4xh. Uh, 2h squared, nothing over here will cancel with that, so plus 2h squared. 3x, this 3x cancels with that 3x. And then we have 3h, so plus 3h, there's nothing to cancel with it. And this one is canceled by that one. So the instructions say simplify as much as possible. Notice that there is a common factor of h in the numerator. So that could be written as 4x plus 2h plus 3, and then factor out an h over h. So we have h over h. And can we cancel? And the answer is yes, because h is positive. So that would be uh, 4x plus 2h plus 3. And we can do this. because h is positive. So the reason why that's significant is because if h was not positive, this expression cannot be evaluated when h is 0, because that would be 0 over 0. But this expression can be evaluated at h is 0, because there's no division by 0. So strictly speaking, these two expressions, this one and this one, are not the same if it was conceivable that h 
could be 0, which is why the question started out by saying let h be positive.